Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your weekly reading. All right, so once again, uh, first five cards deals with love and the second five cards deals with the overall energy, okay? I have a few messages that I'm going to relay to you before we go into uh, this reading. Um, the first message is self-mastery and self-mastery, um, I, I feel like it's not so much on, you know how you're sick and tired of uh, other people telling you to open yourself up emotionally, right? You're, you're sick and tired of hearing that, hearing other uh, people, hearing um, uh, friends, relatives, even advisors or even, you know, readings in general. Um, and I feel like many of you, you have done a lot of growth on the emotional department. And uh, when you're in a relationship, you know how to take care of your relationship partner. And when you really love someone, you know how to be open and vulnerable and to, to really um, allow them, like put your walls and your defenses down to allow them in. And I feel like there is a very dignified way in which you deal with people as well. You care about fairness you do care about i want what's best for this person so i'm going to be uh, open and honest with them even though sometimes the truth might hurt and so i feel like you know people give you guys the bad rep of being unemotional and detached you only detach when a situ situation cannot be fixed and when a situation is no longer um, tenable however what i also feel as well with this sense of self-mastery um, I feel like it's coming in in the friendship platonic uh, relationships uh, sphere where you are still going to have to, you know, uh, let your guard down. So it's not just the people you care about. It's the other people that are around you that you have to work with, that you have to be around energetically. They're constantly in your space or they're constantly, you know, in your periphery. Those are the people, those are the relationships that you kind of need to foster as well, okay? Um, nurturing the ones that are around you and not letting the relationships grow cold and sterile. And I mean that because um, I feel like, you know, no man's an island, okay? Uh, first of all, your energy here, Nine of Pentacles. This is an independence card. This is somebody that's like, okay, I know how to take care of myself. I've got my car, my house, my kids, my pets, whatever it is, I am self-sufficient. I don't really want heavy emotional connections because those things weigh me down. They make me uncomfortable. I can take care of myself. And if I can take care of myself, other people should be able to take care of themselves too. So you make conscious decisions in your life so that your life is not weighed down by material things by heavy emotional connections or even um uh, connections that are very deep very profound that would be difficult to break away from so you make conscious decisions in your own life to kind of like be this you know no uh, like every man's an island i'm self-sufficient i can do things on my own i can take care of myself in every department and once again, this is a great self-sufficiency uh, type of energy, but it's really lacking something, right? Because with the nine, it's still a really good card, but it's lacking that sense of like that completion, that 10 of pentacles that we see down here. And because of that, your relationships might be very, very good right now. But what about the professional contacts, the friendships, the other things in our lives that make it a little bit more robust, all right? Um, so that's just the first message that comes in, and it's, it's a little bit long-winded. But at the same time, I feel like love seems to be going really, really well. Um, cultivate more of your friendships, okay? Because the friendships, the good conversations, conversation where you feel like in sync with another person, where you can talk to them all day, all night, deep into the night, that's what makes you ultimately very, very happy. So let's talk about your love life, first of all. Um, what I have here is, uh, once again, let's talk about this card. I really like this card. Uh, somebody that, you know, makes money, pays uh, for herself or himself. Someone who's very, very self-sufficient. Um, you might be seen as somebody who's very different in your, wherever you're living. You're very independent. You're very different. You, you might stand out in some way because you look very exotic. 
you look different from the people that are around you and I feel like you know somebody might have gotten a tan might have gotten their hair done might have gotten you know like a new wardrobe or somebody that um, at this point looks really good smells nice and you know just uh, does their own thing so because you exhibit this energy where it's like you know I'm, I'm fine I'm really happy I'm, I like the single a hood and I like you know the bachelor hood um, because of this this energy draws in a lot of suitors right because when you you don't go around looking that's when people swarm to you that's just the law of attraction when you are self-sufficient and where you, when you're stable financially and really really happy you vibrate at a different frequency you have a lot of success coming in, a lot of happiness, a lot of suitors, a lot of visibility as well in your environment. And as a result of that, a lot of people are coming to you. They know you're single and they know that, you know, regardless of whether the Aquarius person is looking or not, I'm going to tell them how I feel. OK, the person that you're dealing with might be this person right here. We have here the King of Swords, and the King of Swords is an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. Um, I also feel as well very strong Earth energy. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, they might be air and Earth, and then I'm also feeling like this is a person that is incredibly, incredibly smart because you have to be a smarty pants in order to capture the attention of an Aquarius. Aquarius do not like dummies, okay? Aquarius people are very drawn to people who are articulate, who are witty, who are fast with like a comeback, who can be quirky and weird and whatever, but ultimately Aquarius people are very drawn to people who are like this, like very intelligent. Uh, they don't have to be soft and cuddly and emotional. If anything, that's a little bit of a turnoff for Aquarius, but they just need to know what they're talking about. They need to be an expert in their field. They need to um, respond in a very concise ma manner. They cannot be long-winded and they have to be a problem solver for the Aquarius. So Aquarius people, you've got somebody in your midst that you're really attracted to. And I feel like this is somebody who's... Um, who solves problems for other people. They troubleshoot really well. They're very articulate. They're very smart. They may have multiple degrees under their belt. Um, not like a warm, cuddly type of a person. They can be a little bit prickly. Um, and they overall, um, they have, I, I, I keep seeing multiple degrees, multiple degrees. And you know, degrees don't really mean anything, but I feel like you're drawn to people who are very well-rounded, who knows a lot of things about a lot of things. Okay. So Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, that's the energy that you're, um, is around you. Somebody that you're thinking about, somebody that is really on your radar. This person, what are they dealing with? Insecurity. You're like this. You're self-sufficient. You don't really need anybody. You don't really need them for anything. And so they're the traditional, you know, gender roles. So if you're a female dating a male, they want to be helpful. They want to solve your problems. They want to take care of you. But they don't feel like, like I mentioned before, you don't fit into those stereotypical, you know, gender roles. And so they might feel like they don't have a lot to offer. They might feel like, Am I attractive enough? Am I pretty enough? They might invest, you might notice, and it's kind of funny if you do notice. You usually don't notice these things, but are they, you know, wearing like a, a new pair of shoes when they're around you? Are they investing more in their clothes? Are they using more perfume, cologne? Are they trying that ex to put in that extra effort to make you, uh, to make themselves more attractive? So if you answer yes to all of these things, they're definitely trying to impress you because they feel a little bit insecure. If so, you know, pay attention to the person that you're dealing with. Pay attention to areas about themselves that they might, you know, joke about, but they're not really joking. So they might say like, I wish I had more money or I wish I had more education or I wish I had, you know, I looked better or I wish I looked a certain way because those are the insecurities that they're revealing to you. So in the process of communicating with that person about their insecurities, be sure to not, you know, throw, um, 
uh, add fuel to the fire. So you know, be a little bit more gentle, I guess, when you're dealing with them. Okay, and I feel like you're dealing with someone who's deeply insecure about the way that they look. They don't know if they look good enough because they see you like this. And if they're the empress in the reverse, it's almost like it's almost like. I don't really live up to them. I can't. I'm not on equal footing or equal pedestal with this person. So you've got a, a relationship partner that is very, very um, insecure about their physique, about their uh, appearance, and about you know whether or not they are your equal match physically. I feel like they are your ideal match intellectually. They're really smart. But they don't feel they they I'm, I keep seeing this Taurian energy because you know Taurus um, are very practical and they're more like uh, in the here and now and they 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 take care of their appearance and uh, appearance matters a lot to them the way they dress the way they look so I feel like you're you, they might have Taurus a lot of Taurus placement and they might not feel like they measure up to you appearance wise so for example if you're going on a date and the two of you you know holding hands uh, they they feel insecure because they're like everyone is looking at the Aquarius and wanting to you know hit on the Aquarius person and um, no one's looking at me it's sort of like that um, I see this sense of competition even between you and the relationship partner but either way I feel like the energy for this um, week in terms of love um, be a little bit softer when you're dealing with your relationship partner and don't joke too much about their insecurities because they might take it to heart they might make a very uh, snappy comeback but deep down you know it's these are insecurities that we should honor and respect our partner and not bring out into the light okay a lot of you um, might be focusing on dating as well you know nine of pentacles singles and then the eight of pentacles this is a card about you know going through your options looking at your options so online dating or even um, you know I'm seeing a lot of match like online dating, looking at all the profiles, looking at everybody that's around you, uh, looking at text messages or communication coming through between you and the people that want to be around you. And then a lot of opportunities for you to go out and to really enjoy, um, enjoy, you know, your, your free time. I'm also seeing as well, uh, workplace like romances. Okay. And honestly, I feel like there might be co-workers there might be a lot of people in your professional environment who are headed in the wrong uh, in the same direction as you so you guys are like on the same career track you guys are inspiring to each other they trust the work that you do they trust you as a co-worker therefore they want to transmute that energy and to create more of a it's it's almost like um getting past the friend zone getting past the co-worker platonic uh, vibe so that they can, you know, make a move on you. So I feel like there's a lot of contemplation and the person that you're dealing with, they're strategic. They don't want to make a false move. And because you're so detached, it's hard for you to, it's hard for them to know where you're coming from. So aim to be a little bit more flirtatious and aim to be a little bit more like easygoing and you know carefree and just um joke around a little bit more allow them a way to get into your space okay um because this energy of self-sufficiency it's very good but it's also like oh you know he or she doesn't need me so allow them to get into your space allow you know open up and allow like ask follow-up questions to allow a conversation to start and I feel like your friends or your co-workers will be the catalyst for you to kind of open up to the other person for those who are single so it's almost like you know asking your friends or your co-workers how was your weekend what did you do this weekend and then your crush comes by and you know and then ask your crush how how are you like haven't seen you in a while what did you do this weekend so one conversation that's very platonic leading to another and it allows 
uh, an in. It allows your crush or whoever you're dating or whoever you like to enter the conversation without feeling weird, without you feeling uh, uncomfortable about, you know, asking them exclusively because sometimes you don't like to reveal how you feel, right? You don't want them to get the upper hand but you also want to initiate conversation with them. So I feel like that's really what this is all about. Um, fostering all of your relationships, not only the relationships that you care about or only the people that you love or only the people that you have your eyes on, okay? Um, really, really bright, good energy. And I feel like um, there's a lot of solidification in this spread, but I feel like many of you are single, loving the single life, you would date, but you're uh, waiting for the right person, waiting for somebody that can bring you this sense of happiness, this sense of uh, freedom, and this sense of carefree, childlike energy. So the interaction between you and a crush, between you and a partner, is really good for this week, mainly because it opens up doors about practical you know, direction in the relationship, as well as where are we going, where are we headed. But once again, all the cards indicate to me um, it, it's like a solitary person. So I definitely feel a lot of independence, but also a lot of Aquarius people are single and loving it and focusing on their career. Uh, in the other departments of your life, um, there is going to be as well news, communications, and things like that about family, okay? So the Ten of Pentacles in the reverse. So we're going from this nine here where you are very self-sufficient, and then the Ten of Pentacles in the reverse where family and people that you love, they're going through issues, possibly financial issues. And I definitely feel here we have an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and a water sign, uh, Sag I'm sorry, not Sagittarius, Scorpio, Cancers, Pisces. And I feel as if for those of you, if you have any, I don't see you having financial difficulties, but I also feel like discussions coming through from these two people about how do we take care of our joint finances? How do we take care of mom and dad? If you are partner to these people as well, it's almost like buying new property looking at a move, looking at, at as well at taking care of elderly parents because the Ten of Pentacles is a generational wealth. When it's in the reverse, generational no wealth might not be there. So mom and dad might not have the resources at their disposal, so they're relying on, you know, the children to take care of them. So I feel like there's heavy discussions here about, you know, you wanting to move away, you wanting to get a new start for yourself, but at the same, same time, there might be family issues that's really preventing you from doing that, or concerns about the family unit, concerns about location, concerns about resources that's really preventing this move and you might have shouldered the responsibilities on your own you might have been racked with worries over this but there are either other siblings that are coming in to ease the situation or there are siblings or other people that you can call upon to uh, alleviate this this situation or they can come in with their own strategies and a helping hand in this situation so there is a lot of immense support for you financially and emotionally coming in from the family front okay the friendships friendships as well um i feel like there are opportunities for you to reconnect with old friends there are also opportunities for you um relatives friends people might come in with you know investment opportunities or somebody is getting a new job i just got that here with this king of pentacles somebody's getting a new job somebody is getting like the 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 dream job and they're sharing this information with you so you might be at a distance with each other i also feel for some of you there is a, a situation here where you're trying to break free from possibly a work environment and with the Ten of Pentacles, you're still waiting on the offer. You're still waiting to finalize, uh, to finalize the contract. What does, um, what are the numbers? How long am I contractually obligated to work for you? And things like that that are coming in. But I feel like it's going to have a very, very fruitful resolution, and you're going to get the financial payout that you're hoping for. Okay, so lots of good things um, in all different areas of your life. So I feel like it's going to be a very dynamic week and it's not going to be stressful like last week okay there's a lot of good communication coming through a lot of support coming through from upright people which is really nice to see okay so i hope the reading is helpful for you guys take care okay and i'll talk to you soon bye bye